Good evening and welcome to our second Coffee Break quiz. My name is Mark and I'm the host here at Coffee Break Languages. I host all of the podcasts along with our other uh, teachers and, and native speakers. Um, but this Coffee Break quiz is something a little bit different. It's basically an opportunity to get together and to, to spend some time quizzing ourselves and uh, finding out what you know about uh, the world, about travel, about culture, about music and so on. So I'm really, really pleased to be here tonight. It's 7pm here in the UK. That means I think it's 2pm in the afternoon, uh, Eastern and 11am uh, Pacific time. Um, if you're watching the replay, then you're very welcome as well. There is one rule and one rule only. Please don't post your answers in the comments because that spoils it for everyone else. So please, please, please don't post the answers uh, your answers in the comments. We have got a number of teams joining us. Well, teams, you can be a team of one person. There's no need to be uh, multiple people. We've got Team Solo Traveller, Team Dallas, Da Pronto. Uh, we should do a quiz in Italian. Yet yeah, we can perhaps sometimes do a quiz in Italian. We've got George Team here. Um, we've got Team Istanbul here from Burak. Excellent. Team Humph back for round two. Excellent. The, loves doves, the Love Doves are here as well. And Team Washington DC are here. Fantastic to know you're all here. Um, there will be an opportunity for you to take part a little more, um, well, you can post things later, but we'll, we'll get to that. A few points here that we need to, to remind you of. First of all, it would be useful to have um, some paper and a pen to write down your answers or just use the, the notes app on your phone. Um, secondly, you've, you're posting your team names already, so that's fantastic. Um, the the third point I've got to say again is that don't post your answers in the comments. We had some people posting answers in the comments uh, last week and that was a little bit tricky because then it spoils things for other people. Um, there's no prize for this. It's just a bit of fun. It's also all experimental. Things can go wrong. Hopefully everything will go very smoothly tonight and we'll be able to conduct our quiz and uh, you can enjoy half an hour's worth of entertainment along with me and uh, the, the Coffee Break team who have helped put this together. We've got Team Inter Milan, Team Yorkshire's here, Team 99's here. Uh, we've got people joining us from all over the world, from Brussels, from Long Island, from the Cotswolds, Team Anna, 1pm in Chicago, Buonasera da Yorkshire, Team Washington DC. All looks good. I think we're about ready to get started. We've got La Voyageuse as well, Team Chris from Dubai. Fantastic. Okay, what happens in this? You're going to be answering questions. You can just answer them in your head. You can write down the answers on a sheet of paper. Again, don't post the answers uh, on the, the... I think we've made that quite clear. Don't post the answers in the comments. Um, we are going to start with round one. Uh, so let's get straight into this. Here is round one. This round is all about people and places. So we're going to be asking five questions about people and places from around the world. Here is question number one. Again, no answers in the comments, please. In which country would you find the cities of Viña del Mar, Antofagasta and Valparaíso? Is it A, Argentina, B, Chile, C, Peru or D, Uruguay? So in which country would you find the cities of Viña del Mar, Antofagasta and Valparaíso. Okay, so that's question number one. Let's move on to question number two. Where is the Abraj Albait clock tower, the world's third tallest building? Okay, where is the Abraj Albait clock tower? Is it in A, Jerusalem, B, Dubai, C, Mumbai, or D, Mecca? Again, no answers in the comments. Please take a note of your answer and we'll, we'll, we'll go through the answers a little later. So where is the, world, the, the world's third tallest building, the Abraj Albaid clock tower, clock tower? Okay, moving on. Question number three. Which Norwegian composer was born in June 1843? Was it A. Edvard Grieg, B. Edvard Munch, C. Jean Sibelius or D. Carl Nielsen? Which Norwegian composer was born in June 1843? A. Edvard Grieg B. Edvard Munch C. Jean Sibelius or D. Carl Nielsen We've got people joining us from the Philippines where it's 2.05am um, Team Sandra on her home um, Sharad's joining us in South Africa We've got Nina in San Diego Fantastic um, And Anneliese is here as well Cuckoo. Okay, question number four with which four countries does Slovenia share a border? 
Is it A, Greece, Bulgaria, Serbia and Albania? B, Germany, Netherlands and Belgium? C, Italy, Austria, Croatia and Hungary? Or D, Spain, France and Portugal? With which four countries does Slovenia share a border? And yes, there's a little trick in there. <laughs> there's one that's definitely not going to be the correct answer. <laughs> so is it A, Greece, Bulgaria, Serbia and Albania? B, Germany, Netherlands and Belgium? C, Italy, Austria, Croatia and Hungary? Or D, Spain, France and Portugal? Okay, let's move on. Question five, the final question in this round. In what year did the Summer Olympics take place in Rome? Was it A, 1932, B, 1992, C, 1960, or D, 2012? In what year did the Summer Olympics take place in Rome? Was it A, 1932, B, 1992, C, 1960, or D, 2012? Okay, so you should have five letters written down. We will now go through these answers. So let us just bring in our questions one again. So question number one was, in which country would you find the cities of Viña del Mar, Antofagasta and Valparaíso? The correct answer there is B, Chile. In fact, Fernanda, who helps us with Coffee Break Spanish magazine, is from uh, Valparaíso, Viña del Mar, which is near Valparaíso. Okay, question number two. Where is the Abraj Albaid clock tower, the world's third tallest building? Okay, was it A, Jerusalem, B, Dubai, C, Mumbai, or D, Mecca? The correct answer there is D, Mecca. It is the world's tallest clock tower. Um, it is also the world's tallest hotel, and the clock face is the world's largest at 43 metres in diameter. So there you go. Question number three. Uh, which Norwegian composer was born in June 1843? Was it A, B, C or D, Edvard Grieg, Edvard Munch, Jean Sibelius and uh, Carl Nielsen? The correct answer is Edvard Grieg. Um, Edvard Munch was a Norwegian artist, Jean Sibelius a Finnish composer and Carl Nielsen a Danish composer. So only one possible answer there. Question number four. Which, with which four countries does Slovenia share a border? Obviously, it couldn't be D because there only are three countries in that, in that selection. Slovenia, in fact, shares a border with Austria, Italy, Croatia and Hungary. So the correct answer there is C. And the last question, in what year did the Summer Olympics take place in Rome? The Summer Olympics took place in Rome in 1960. So just in case you were wondering, 1932 was LA, 1992 Barcelona and 2012 London. So give yourselves a mark out of five and feel free to post what you got out of five in the comments and that way I'll see how you're getting on. So one out of five, two out of five, three out of five, four out of five or five out of five. But again, no answers in the comments, please. OK, that was round one. It's time to move on uh, to round two. So let's get straight on with round two. Okay, this round is all about words and language and uh, origins and etymology and, and so on. So great to see um, your results. Um, yeah, there was another one with only three countries there, I noticed. Um, Jeff got three out of five, Karen got four out of five, Wilma four out of five, Monica four. Um, has anyone got, yeah, Castile got five out of five. Fantastic. Um, good stuff. Let's continue on. We are going to continue on with uh, round two now. So let's bring in our questions for round two. Um, I hope that this button is the right button to press. Yes, it is. So question number one in round two. What is rhinology the study of? Is it A, diamonds, and I can't believe it. I've I've not changed this slide. I was supposed to change this slide. So again, <laughs> this one's pretty obvious. Is it A, diamonds, B, rhinoceros, C, sinuses, or D, diamonds? <laughs> so what is rhinology the study of? A, diamonds, B, rhinoceros, C, sinuses, or D, diamonds? Okay, question number two. Which of the following words would score highest in Scrabble? Would it be A, big, B, small, 
C long or D short? Just a reminder again, please don't post your comments in the, the post your answers in the comments. Okay, I can see people posting their answers. Don't post your answers. Which of the following words would score highest in Scrabble? A big, B small, C long, D short. And just to be clear, we're talking about English. Okay, so playing Scrabble in English, which of the following words would score highest? Question three. Let's bring it in. If something is described as nappy form, is it A, shaped like a nappy or a diaper, B, shaped like a turnip, C, shaped like someone sleeping, or D, shaped like a neck? Okay, if something is described as nappy form, is it A, shaped like a nappy or a diaper, B, shaped like a turnip, C, shaped like someone sleeping, or D, shaped like a neck? Okay, question number four in this round. The word salamat means thank you in which language? Is it A, Tagalog, B, Urdu, C, Pashto, or D, Arabic? The word salamat means thank you in which language? A, Tagalog, B, Urdu, C, Pashto, or D, Arabic? And question five, the last one in this round again. Which of these is not an official language of South Africa? Is it A, Swahili, B, Zulu, C, Osa, D, Tswana? So which of these is not an official language of South Africa? A, Swahili, B, Zulu, C, Osa, or D, Tswana? And apologies for my Osa there, I'm not very good at that. Okay, so those are our five questions from uh, this round. It is now time to mark this round. So let's go back through them. And again, I'm trusting you to do your own marking here. So question number one, what is rhinology the study of? Despite there being two diamonds here, it actually is not the study of diamonds. It's the study of sinuses. I'll need to make sure I, I don't make these mistakes when I'm preparing these slides next time. Okay, what is rhinology the study of? It's the study of sinuses. Question number two, which of the following words would score highest in Scrabble? Well, the correct answer there is, let me double check, it's short. So just to explain, big would get you six points, small would get you seven points, long would get you five points, and uh, short would get you eight points. And then assuming there's no double word scores or anything like that. Okay, so question number three. If something is described as nappy form, is it A, shaped like a nipper? Well, we've been through all this before. We will we'll not bother going, going through it again. It's in fact shaped like a turnip. Now, you may be familiar with the Spanish word nabo, which means turnip, um, the Latin word napus, and also the Scottish word neep, as in neeps and tatties, which we have with our uh, haggis. Okay, so that's nappy form. It's shaped like a turnip. Question number four. Salamat is thank you in Tagalog. So it's also in Cebuano in Hiligaynon, and it's used to obviously express gratitude. And it's linked to the Arab word, um, which means peace, offering you peace. And it can also mean I hope you're fine and, and what's the matter and things like that. Okay, question number five. Which of these is not an official language of South Africa? The one that's not an official language in South Africa there is Swahili. The three others are official languages. In fact, there are 11 official languages in South Africa, and those are three of them. But Swahili is an official language in Kenya, um, where else? Tanzania, Rwanda, Uganda, the Democratic Republic of Congo. There we go. That is the end of round two. So put your uh, scores in the, the comments. Um, and just looking at some of the, the comments here, we've got uh, Mark saying Tagalog from the Philippines. Yes, I'm assuming, Mark, you're from the Philippines. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> some people are saying that they're very hard questions. Hopefully, at least we're all learning something um, and you can take this knowledge away for your next pub quiz or, or whatever. OK, so let's see your uh, scores for uh, round two. Looks good. We've got some fours. We've got a one. We've got some threes again. Uh, I don't see anybody yet with five, four out of five, three out of five, uh, zero out of five, not to worry. Um, okay, two again, at least you're consistent. Yes, Becky, good stuff. Okay, let's continue with round three. Round three. Here we go, our third round.
This is our music round and we're looking at multicultural music. So we're starting in Korea. Gangnam Style was the first video to have over 1 billion views on YouTube. But who or what is Gangnam? Is it A, a Korean fashion model? B, Korean slang for popular? C, a district of Seoul? Or D, the name, the real name of singer Psy? Okay, so Gangnam Style, the word Gangnam, does that refer to a Korean fashion model? A Korean slang for popular, C, a district of Seoul, or D, the real name of Sai, the singer Sai. Okay, question number two. Which song in 1969 became the first foreign language song to top the UK charts? Was it A, Je t'aime moi non plus, B, Jo le taxi, C, La Bamba, or D, Volare? Which song in 1969 became the first foreign language song to top the UK charts? Was it A, Je t'aime moi non plus, B, Jo le taxi, C, La Bamba, or D, Volare? Okay, Connor saying he definitely learning, he loves a tough quiz, good, I'm glad. <laughs> um, Nina, first to, fun to see how my life has helped me know these answers, only three out of five, but I'm a music professor, so I know all about Greek. Four out of five of round two, and I know about Swahili from having been a Peace Corps volunteer in Kenya, fantastic. Okay, <laughs> so, we may drop the questions down a gear. Oh, it doesn't matter, it's all multiple choice. Okay, here goes question number three. Who sang Nel Blu di Pinto di Blu, which is also known as Volare, at the 1958 Eurovision Song Contest? Was it A, Dean Martin, B, Frank Sinatra, C, Peppino di Capri, or D, Domenico Modugno? Okay, now... What I should say here, if any Coffee Break Italian listeners are joining us, then perhaps you've got a little bit of a, 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 a head start on this one because we've spoken about this on the show. Okay, so was it Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra, Peppino Di Capri or Domenico Modugno who sang uh, the, the song Nel Blu, Dipinto Di Blu? And just a reminder, please, 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 please don't post your answers in the comments because that spoils it for everyone else. Okay, here we go. Let's continue on with question four. Which of these places has not featured in a song by ABBA? A. Waterloo in Belgium. B. Paris in France. C. Glasgow in the UK. Or D. Stockholm in Sweden. Okay, so Waterloo, Paris, Glasgow or Stockholm. Which of these places has not featured in a song by ABBA? Okay. Continuing on, final question in this round. Composer Ennio Morricone was born in which country? Was it A, Italy, B, Spain, C, Malta, or D, USA? Uh, someone's saying they can't press the answers. You're not supposed to be able to press the answers. These are just shown on the screen. You can't press anything. It's not a, a, an, um, an interactive quiz or anything like that. But please don't post your answers in the comments. That's the whole idea behind this quiz. Um, and I know that some people are still continuing to do that. And... Uh, It'd be much better if you didn't. Please don't. Okay, let's correct these answers. Let's have a tune to sing, Mark. I bet you know the ABBA one. Yes, I do indeed. Okay, question number one then. Gangnam Style was the first video to have over 1 billion views on YouTube. Who or what is Gangnam? Gangnam is a district of Seoul. So give yourself a point if you scored that one. Question two. Which song in 1969 became the first foreign language song to top, to top the UK charts? Um, it was Je t'aime moi non plus. Now, the other songs, Jolie Taxi, was not released until 1987, as was Los Lobos with La Bamba. Uh, that did go to number one in the UK and uh, in the US. Well, Larry picked at number 10 in the UK in 1958, but reached number two in the US. Okay, now we'll stick with Volare for the next song, or the next question, rather. Who sang Nel Blu di Pinto di Blu, or Volare, at the 1958 Eurovision Song Contest? It was, in fact... Domenico Modugno. Domenico Modugno sang uh, Volare. I won't sing, I promise. Okay, question number four. Which of these places has not featured in a song by ABBA? Believe it or not, it is Stockholm in Sweden, despite the fact that ABBA hail from Stockholm. Well, some of the members uh, live in Stockholm now. Um, Waterloo, of course, in the song Waterloo. Paris in Our Last Summer. Glasgow in Super Trooper. So there we go. And question number five, composer uh, Ennio Morricone was born in Italy. Okay, 
There we go. Um, that is round three. Um, it doesn't matter if you're guessing all the way, Barbara. That's the whole point of it. We're just having a little bit of fun and hopefully something in this will be useful to you at some point in the world. I, I always say that there's never any wasted knowledge, any knowledge that you acquire anywhere along the way, whether that's doing a quiz, whether it's reading a book, whether it's, it's learning a language or whatever, it always comes in useful at once. And that's the whole purpose of what we are doing here. Let's move on to round four. This one is a little bit different. Now, we were absolutely blown away by your, your efforts last week coming up with a limerick. Um, and the idea of a limerick is the basically is a poem with um, five lines. Lines one and two and five rhyme with each other and lines three and four rhyme with each other. So A, A, B, B, A rhyme scheme. Um, so let's look at an example. There once was a man from Rome. We did Rome last week. His head was as bald as a dome. His own hair he cut as the barbers were shut, and now he just stays at home. So if we're thinking about our rhyme scheme here, what happens here is we've got Rome, then Dome rhyming, and then we've got two separate rhymes, so cut and shut, and then we're back to the same rhyme with home. So that's what you have to do. We are asking you to come up with your own uh, rhyme, with your own limerick, using that da 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 Let's just go back to the, the, the rhyme here. There once was a man from Rome, his head was as bald as a dome, his own hair he cut as the barber's was shut, and now he just stays at home. So da 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 dum da 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 dum da 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 dum da 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 dum da 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 dum. Very straightforward. It's not Rome this week. We are about to reveal your city. You're going to get five minutes to come up with a limerick. What I would suggest you do is just type it into the comments, but don't press return at the end of each line. Just keep typing, or if you want to put some dots so that we know where the line ends. And we're going to share some of our favourite ones from the audience after this five minute challenge here. So you've got five minutes and we are looking forward to seeing your rhymes. But this week, your rhymes have to be about this city. Here goes.
just a reminder that you should not be pressing return at the end of each line. Uh, just add a dash or some dots so that you, you we can see where your lines end. Um, or you can do shift return and that should not post uh, the, the full limerick there. Um, let's have a look. Okay, your time is up. Um, we are looking forward to seeing some of these limericks. We've really enjoyed reading them so far. There are some excellent ones. Let's have a look. Uh, I'm just looking through the list here. Um, yeah, so let's look at Bjorn's here. Bjorn's saying, If I'd make my way to Shanghai, I hope that I will by and by. I'd eat well, I know, and my stomach would grow till my wrist was as big as my thigh. <laughs> Brilliant. Excellent. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Um, we, we, we can't unfortunately post them all. Let's post a few. Um, Sandra, what's Sandra got? There was a young girl from Shanghai who went to the shops to buy anything in fashion because that was her passion. When the bills came in, she'd cry. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Joanna. There once was a man from Shanghai. His blood pressure was awfully high. He cut down on meat except as a treat, so now he's so fit he can fly. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> oh, excellent. Um, let's see what else we've got. Um, uh, sorry, I'm just looking through here. Um, So I'm not getting the comments here now anymore. Let's see. Oh, here we've got them. Yeah, they're all coming flooding in now. Okay. Um, so let's have a look at this one. There was a young man from Shanghai who had tons of friends. What a guy. His town was shut down. Now his friends won't come round. Too bad his house has no Wi-Fi. <laughs> Brilliant. These are all fantastic. Um, I thank you so much. I'm going to read them all after. The, we can't go through them all just now, but I'm definitely going to read them all afterwards. So, so well done to everyone for posting your limericks today. Okay, it's time for our final round. One last round here, and that is uh, round five. This round is all about cosmopolitan cuisine, world food. We're going to be going around the world to uh, sample some food here in our final round. If you manage to come up with a limerick, give yourself five points for that final round. Uh, well done to everyone for your limericks there. There, uh, as I say, five more questions. Let's go straight into uh, round five. Question number one. Jibachi Senbei from the Japanese village of Omatsi are rice crackers containing what delicacy? Is it A, ants, B, locusts, C, wasps, or D, beetles? So what do Jibachi Senbei from the Japanese village of Omatsi 
contain? Ants, locusts, wasps or beetles? Question number two. In which country is Brunost, brown cheese, most commonly eaten? Uh, in which country is Brunost, brown cheese, most commonly eaten? Okay, question number three. Oh, well, I forgot to go through the, the answers there. So A, Netherlands, B, Iceland, uh, C, Germany, or D, Norway. And once again, just remember, don't post your answers in the comments. In which country is Brunost most commonly eaten? Let's go on to question number three. If you'd ordered how curry in Iceland, what would you be eating? A, lamb, B, shark, C, whale, or D, puffin? So if you ordered how curry in Iceland, what would you be eating? A, lamb, B, shark, C, whale, or D, puffin? Okay, question number four. What is borscht? Is it A, a Dutch cinnamon pastry, B, a German apple brandy, C, a Malaysian chicken dish, or D, a Ukrainian beetroot soup? So what is borscht? A, a Dutch cinnamon pastry, B, a German apple brandy, C, a Malaysian chicken dish, or D, a Ukrainian beetroot soup? Question uh, number five. This is the final question in this round, and indeed the final question in the quiz. Wine from which country is most likely to be labelled Gran Reserva? Was it A, Italy, B, Argentina, C, Spain, or D, Chile? So, from which country would you most likely to be see wine to see wine that was labelled Gran Reserva? A, Italy, B, Argentina, C, Spain, or D, Chile? Okay, so those are your five questions for this round. Let's go back through them. Question number one, Jibachi Senbei are rice crackers which contain wasps, C. Question two, in which country is uh, Brunost most commonly eaten? It is most commonly eaten in Norway. I think we've got some Norwegians joining us tonight. Um, Brunost has a lovely caramel flavour um, and uh, uh, Norwegians are rightly proud of it. Question number three. If you ordered halkari in Iceland, what would you be eating? You would, in fact, be eating fermented shark. Um, I've never tasted it myself. I'll need to taste it someday, but I won't be rushing to it. I would rather have the Brunos than, than the halkari, I think. Um, question number four. Uh, what is borscht? Borscht is a Ukrainian beetroot soup. Uh, it's popular all over Eastern Europe, um, but it originally comes from Ukraine, I'm led to believe. And question five, wine from which country is most likely to be labelled Gran Reserva? It is, of course, Spain. So the answer there is Spain. Wine from Spain is most likely to be labelled Gran Reserva. OK, give yourselves a mark out of five for that one. But what I'd like you to do now is give yourself a total. There are a total of 20 marks available for the questions in rounds one, two, three and five. And also five marks for your... Um, your limerick as well. So it's out of a possible 25. Give yourself a score out of 25 and I'm looking forward to seeing it. your final totals uh, in the comments. While we are doing that, just a couple of other things. First of all, let me just take that little thing because it's okay to post answers now. Just let me remind you that we are running the Coffee Break Choir at the moment. And the Coffee Break Choir is a project which will allow you to take part in, in a video, a special video that we're putting together using uh, the famous song L-O-V-E by Nat King Cole. And uh, there are verses, verses in French, German, Spanish and Italian. And we're asking everyone to send us a, a, a video of themselves singing this song along with our backing track. So if you go to radiolingua.com slash choir, um, then you'll be able to access uh, the, the video for this. And the, the closing date is next Monday. So we need you to get that in by next Monday um, if you'd like to take part. And we'll put a video together featuring everyone singing the, 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 same, choir, the same song basically as a choir. So um, please do take part in that. Um, we're continuing our Facebook Lives uh, and tomorrow we're doing French at 10am UK time. To, so that will be um, uh, high, ideal for people in, in Australia, New Zealand and of course in, in, in Europe. Um, maybe not quite as ideal for our American listeners. Um, but of course the replay will be available. So that's at 10 o'clock um, tomorrow morning. Um, the choir, just uh, someone saying the choir, where do I go to post? Um, so the choir is at 
Um, let me see if I can put this in here, radiolingua.com slash choir. That should go into all of um, the the comment series where you can see. Um, Chris is asking, I joined the quiz late. How often is the quiz? Well, we did one last week. We're doing one this week. We're not going to do one next week, but po possibly we'll be back the following week with another quiz if it's something that you enjoy. So do comment on the, the quiz. Let us know if it's something that you've enjoyed. Um, and uh, we will be back again uh, another time. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I hope you've had some fun. Um, uh, I hope that you have perhaps learned something, something that you didn't know, and that most importantly, that it comes in useful to you in a future quiz or some random piece of information that you suddenly find uh, that, that you know. Um, great to see your scores. Um, I'm, seeing, I'm, I'm seeing a 19 so far. Oh, a 21 from Anya. Excellent. Uh, do we have any advance on 20? Monica Anderson, 24. Fantastic. Um, so 24 is our is our top score at the moment by the looks of things. I'm just going to post this. Um, Nina's saying, thank you and congratulations on crafting such an excellent quiz. Professor here, so I'm critical of this sort of thing. Challenging and fun, even if I have no idea for the answer. First time I've seen this quiz, so I'll figure out how to find it from now on. Thanks for, for that, Nina. Um, so I think um, I think the 24 score was the top score. So very well done to, I think that was Monica. Um, yeah, Monica Anderson of 24. That was fantastic. Well done to everyone. Thank you for taking part in the quiz and uh, stay well, stay safe. And uh, um, I hope you continue your, your language learning with us. Above all, happy coffee breaking. See you soon.